Chapter 11 of Hemshech Hayim Beis, Volume 1. This is Discourse Number 2, page 17. To sum up, the discourse began with a uh, discussion of Kesser, the crown, which is the ultimate interface as will be elaborated through the entire uh, Hampshire, the entire series, the ultimate interface. And Kesser, the crown, as he explains, is the will, the desire of the source, of the essence, to connect with something. If there's no awakening of a desire or a will, there's no connection. So essence on its own is separate from everything. Using an example of ourselves, you need to want something. You need to desire something for you to connect. I want to sit down. So there's a relationship to a chair. I want to build a home. I want to uh, find someone I love. Without that, we remain intact within ourselves without relationship outside. So Kesser is the symbol of the interface of the divine wanting something. In this case, a desire for to have a home in the, in the, in the lowest of worlds. To explain Kesser, the crown, explain this interface, to explain this all-encompassing interface, as he explains that in each world is a Kesser, because each world is a desire for that particular structure. So to, to understand that, he goes into a whole elaborate discussion, which is going to be over close to 40 chapters, I believe, to explain the structure of existence. In other words, to understand the interface that connects us to existence, we have to first understand the structure of existence. This will go for 45 chapters. And he begins to explain what we call our pnimi. So Kesser would be an armakif because it's a surrounding, all-encompassing desire for all of existence, or a desire for a particular part of that existence. And what is existence itself? Existence itself consists of a structure which is called arpanimi. Arpanimi, as opposed to armakif, which surrounds and encompasses, arpanimi is internalized and integrated. Which means that it is a, uh, it is as he explains, using the example of faculties, of human faculties, every faculty has a particular place where it manifests, a particular organ. And the organ and the faculty and the energy are tailored to each other. That's our pneum. So our pneum is not just an energy that enters, but the energy itself is a different sort. So we have the energy that, def that um, vivifies that sustains, that energizes existence. And as we'll get back to it later, then the energy of the interface that connects existence to that which is beyond existence. Or as we spoke about, existence to transcendence. So that in a nutshell is where we're at in this whole analysis in big picture. Now, to break it down, first begins in Discourse 1, primarily through the first chapters, through chapter... Uh, um, let's see here. Through chapter four, basically two, three, and four are about the example of the faculties of the human being to see it within our own bodies, within our own systems. Chapter five, six, he explains it in the nimshal, meaning how that faculty is, how it expresses itself in the, the supernal man, man. Remember, we're created in the divine image. So we are an example. From our flesh, we are an example of how it works on the higher structure, in the, higher, in the cosmic order. So chapter 6 and 7 were focused on, I'm sorry, 5 and 6 focused on how it is in the supernal man, the idea of arpanimi, where energy and containers are tailored to each other. And in chapter 7 began the discussion of what exactly this, this, uh, this Atsilis is. Remember, Atsilis is the supernal man, Odama Elliot. So Atsilis is the perfect world 
of the cosmic order, but or pnimi. So if you want existence in its um, so-called the quintessential state of existence, it's atzilus. That's why it's so critical. Because remember, we live in a world where we already, not only are we beyond it, are we, have we descended and we're distant from the interface, which is keser, and the will and desire for our existence, but we're even disconnected from existence itself in its healthiest form. We've wandered away, not just from the interface, we've wandered away from, from the, even the healthiest form of the structure. So Atzillus is the pure structure. Keser would be the interface that connects the structure to that which is beyond the structure. And we, meaning us, down here on Earth, in Bri, Yitzir in the lowest of worlds, are a reflection, a reflection with much of the energy concealed, even the energy of the structure, let alone the energy of the desire and the interface. So our purpose, in the, our, pur- our role would be, our work would be, first align ourselves with the perfect structure, with Atsilas, the Oris and Kalim, the energy containers as they're balanced and fit with each other, and then align ourselves through that with the desire and the interface that connects us to transcendence. So in chapter 7, he begins the question, which is now his middle of, which is the discussion, the seemingly contradiction. What is Atsilas? On one hand, Atsilas means an emanation, not a creation. What's the difference between Atsilas and Bria? Bria is creation. The difference between Atsilas and Bria is like this. They both, obviously, are, are not the essence. But there are things that the essence expresses itself and things that reflect and are more, comment, are more similar to the essence, like, let's say, energy itself. And then there are things that the, that the essence or the source creates, creates, Creates means it's not similar to, and therefore it is like a new thing. Now the truth is everything is new, and everything really is in the source, but the question is, how much reflective of the source is it? How much of its own identity manifests? So from the perspective of God, Eris, Kalim, Matzilus, everything is all encompassed in one large unity. But from the perspective outside of the source, there's a key distinction between Atsilus, or oil in general, energy, which is dovuk, is connected to its source, and a container which has its own identity. So one is reflective and therefore carries the transcendent dimension, carries, expresses itself as like the agent of the divine in the interface, and the other one is the agent and, and, and the representative of, the, of existence. And they meet in the oil and Kali union. But now the question is, what is that silus? So Atzillus, on one hand, is an emanation. When you look into Atzillus, you see godliness. Yes, in a structure. Chachma, Bina, Chesed, Gvura, Teferis, and so on. But it's a structure that's a divine structure. So it's a supernal man, Odom Elyon. And we were created in its image. But remember, the image is concealed in most of us. But it is the image of the divine. So Atzillus is the image in its four purest form, the quintessential form. Pristine image of the divine. An image, meaning not the essence of God, which is beyond the image, but how God manifests in particular faculties, how God loves, how God disciplines, how God is compassionate, the intensity of God, Netzach, and so on. Godliness, we call it. So at Silas, on one hand, there's an emanation, not a creation. On the other hand, we're told that as distance, as distant, as Bria is from Atsilas, Atsilas is distant from the is more distant from the divine. Means being Yeshur Shaina Reich. So on the other hand, Atsilas is is completely distant, infinitely distant from the divine source. So, how, so the question is, some places it appears that Atsilus is like something new, because compared to the divine source, it's a completely new entity. On the other hand, we find that Atsilus is Gilead Helam, not Eskachos, a revelation of the divine. He uses the word from the Mareches, which is one of the great Kabbalists. It says, it 
Nothing was nude. It's only revealing his hidden and concealed power. An example in our lives would be, obviously it's not an exact example, but would be when our faculties emerge. Is it something new that the soul, because you open up a soul, dissect the soul, a soul is not a composite of parts. A soul is one unified, indivisible entity. So are the faculties a new, something new coming out of the soul? Or are they just a revelation of the soul? So we really see both things. On one hand, you're not going to find faculties inside the soul. So in a way, it's like something new. It's a specific faculty. On the other hand, the, the faculties are revealing the potential of the soul. They're all there in a state of potential. Wisdom, love, doesn't come from nowhere. It's coming from the soul's power. It doesn't come from the body. So to reconcile this, he explains that Atsilis, that Atsilis is the interface. Now remember, even though Kesser is going to be the ultimate interface between the transcendence and the existence, but within the interfaces itself, there are many interfaces. So it's a story of interfaces. So the interface, he says, Atsilis is the Mamutsa. Therefore, as a good interface, it has to have, this is what he explains in, uh, in, in um, chapter 8, that as an interface, it has to have something that represents that which is higher than it and that which represents that's lower. So it's important to remember that this is this like a hologram. The interface in general was going to be Kesa. But then, because the interface has to integrate every part of existence, you're going to find interfaces on every level. On every level. So Atsilis is now the interface here. And the Eris of Atsilis, the energy of Atsilis, represents the divine. And the Kalim of Atsilis represents existence. And here's how he's going to reconcile the contradiction, seemingly. From the perspective of the Eir of Atsilis, Eir comes from the Kav. The Kav is the thin ray of light that originates from before the Tzimtzum. It's not the concealment. So it's a limited Kav, but it's an energy. So it originates from the energy. Therefore, in that context, Atsilis is only Gilead Hell. It only reveals that which is hidden. But the containers of Atsilis, which already have identity and parameters, from the container perspective, that's where we say Atsilis is like something new. And the distance from the containers to the source is infinitely distant more than the distance from the containers of Atsilis compared to the lower levels of identity in the lower worlds. So that's how he reconciles the two. So in chapter 8, he begins that discussion. Chapter 9, he explains now how the containers are this element that is so distant because the containers are a new identity. The containers are created through the tzimtzum, through concealment, as opposed to the energy. The, 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 the oil comes from the kav. It's created in a distant way from through concealment. And then in chapter 10, he qualifies. It says, even though the containers are also at Silas, because remember, we have we're not talking about containers that are like containers in the world of Asiya. They're still, we're still talking about a divine world. Remember, a divine structure. The structure is also divine. Nevertheless, as he says, the containers are compared to sparks. So sparks that come out of a flame are from the original personality, they're flame. So they're not a different mahus. They're not a new entity. But compared to their source in the divine infinite light and even compared to the Rishima, which is the source of the containers as the residue that remains after the light is concealed there they are infinitely distant so sparks they are containers later in Biya are not even called sparks that's already a, a dark container here the containers are like sparks but sparks are already outside of the source that's chapter 11, 10 and now we continue with chapter 11. Chapter 11, page 17. All that we discuss now is in the level of the containers of Atsilis. Avla is the Atsilis, the energies of Atsilis, the lights of Atsilis. Hayem Bechin is Gilea Helen. Hayem 
They are not new and infinitely distant. They're Gilead Helen, as opposed to Ischachus. Ischachus is when you say something is new, it's a different personality. Here it's Gilead Helen means it's revealing that which was concealed. You can't call that new. You can't call that yesh ma'ayin. Yesh ma'ayin is when something like a new entity pops out of something. And it's an interesting example, but the, it doesn't really it doesn't really use it in Amsterdam, but like that, that child is born from parents. Is this a new creation? Or is it something that was concealed? So you really see two sides to it. On one hand, the child is absolutely a new creation. It's not an extension of the parent. On the other hand, the child has the genes and the hereditary, and the hereditary uh, traits from the parents and reveals many of the hidden faculties, the hidden powers of parents. That's why, for example, Chassidus brings example, two blind parents can give child birth to a child that sees. But at the end of the day, it's a new child. As a matter of fact, the child will have sometimes qualities that both parents don't have. It may skip a generation. So there's an element of newness and there's an element of revealing that was the, which was before. So I don't know if it's an exact example, but I just wanted to show. So now we've got, that's the containers is the new. When it comes to a child, it's a new container, it's a new body, it's a new human being with a new name who will live, who will live independently from his parents. Yet, even if he loves his parents and is completely aligned with them, he's an, a separate entity. And yet, there's something about that reveals that which was there. It's not just a stranger that you hire for a job. A child is ultimately an extension. A revelation, not just of his own parents, but also of grandparents and great-grandparents of that which came before. But obviously, every one of us has a unique soul. So the perspective of the soul, and obviously the perspective of our mission, we're unique in that sense. It's just an example for certain elements here. The energies of Atsilis, however, as opposed to the containers, are a revelation of that which was concealed. The Adin Sefa Meitzel, Gilead Helen, the revelation of that which was concealed from the infinite divine light of the source. See, when we call God Boira, creator, that's Nivroim, Bria. We call Netzalim, Meitzel. So Meitzel is the divine, when we find God as the source of the emanations of Atsilis, that's Meitzel. Boira would be when you talk about God as the creator of something new. Shari Savusa Ma'akav. Why the energy is a revelation of the divine, infinite divine light of the source, of the emanator, Shari Savusa Ma'akav, because their creation, their existence comes from the Kav. The Kav is that thin ray of light that emerged after the Tzimtzum. I should have read it differently. Its, it's existence from the Kantakav is in a form of Kiruv. As opposed to before the containers, we said that their creation comes through distance, through concealment. The, 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 the energy emerges through the Kav in a form of closeness. Because the energy, the light, is bound and cleaved and, and, and connected with the divine light, the divine infinite light of the source, a mitzel of the source, like a flame that's connected with its with the coal. Not like sparks. So sparks are, are, are still flame, but they're now they're separate from. They've been they've uh, separated from the source. And that's why these energies are in a form of bli ma. We call Esosphere is Bli Ma is the expression in the Sefer Yitzira, the Book of Formation. Bli Ma means without substance. Ma is substance. Ma, what? Bli Ma, without substance. Later this was used in the context of Chochma, Koyach Ma, the Bittel of Ma. Ma is also, as we've learned later, is Gematria Odom, as opposed to Ban, which is Gematria Behem. It does not have substance. It does not yet have the essence and the existence of emotions and faculties, feelings and faculties. Mahusumitsias, as we will learn, Mahus always means mahu. What is something? The essence of something, its inner personality. Matsias is its outer function or outer shape. 
and function. So the so the iris are connected like the flame in the in the coal, and they still don't yet have substance. And just like the energy from the kav comes in the form of kirov closeness, and is connected and doesn't yet have substance, the chen hakav meidin sof how you gamkin bechinus dveikus. Now he has to go to the next step. You could say the energy connected to the kav is closer. But what about the kav, which comes after the tzim? So maybe the kav is not connected, which then causes the energy of atzilus also to not be completely connected. So he says the chen hakav meidin sof. Same thing, the ray of light. The line of light from the infinite divine light, it's also connected, it's also attached. Like it says in Eitz Chaim, which Eitz Chaim is, of course, the classic work of the Arizal, where this whole concept of Tzimtzum and Kav is first revealed. Like it says in Eitz Chaim, that the Kav touches and is attached to the divine light. So in the image, it's connected to that which is the light before the tzimtzum. Just for the record, when we say before, after, we're talking obviously all conceptually. It's just simply levels to appreciate the... So we say before, after, that's what I mean. In other words, it's right now also all these levels are there and they're constantly... Okay, now, and even though the kav, this ray of light, this narrow thread, kav chut, kav means line, chut means thread. Nimshel gamkin also extends through the tzimtzum. In other words, the whole point of the kav, what was there? A complete tzimtzum, it concealed everything. And then came a kav, a very narrow, thin ray of light. So clearly it came from the tzimtzum, or else it wouldn't be narrow and it wouldn't be limited in that sense. So clearly the kav has been affected by the tzimtzum and come through the tzimtzum and after the tzimtzum. Nevertheless, correct, the symptom caused it to be a narrow way of light, but it but it's light. It's not container. Nevertheless, it's ext- it's uh, transmission. Its extension is from the infinite divine light from before the symptom. And even though the way it transmits is not jump, that of diluk. Just to explain, dilug means, you know, when you have something flowing, you have something flowing directly. So let's say a a river of water is just flowing. But then you can have an impediment that blocks it and causes the water, let's say, to jump over or to skip. So dilug is when something is not just flowing in a smooth flow, seamless flow, there's a jump. The jump can go both ways. Like by Pesach, we say jump, dilug, rikvitsa, we say jumping to get out of you have to sometimes jump out. You can't just walk out. Because you have to jump over something. But jumping could also mean the opposite, going downward. Jumping. That there's a jump from a very pure place. So it's with that deal, it means a certain type of jump. It's a certain, in other words, it's not just a free flow, Gilead Helen, that just revealing what is concealed. It's coming with a with a with a certain jump. We're saying we're saying call, right? He didn't say he's asking now. He may hear that with symptom at symptom. That even though, though its transmission and extension is from the dilug of the symptom, remember, it's not like the energy was there and then it just contracted into a thin ray of light. First, there was a complete symptom. And after, from the, so, it, so the kav comes through and, and through the method, through the path of this jump of the symptom, which completely concealed. Kemoshla situs, al de hefse called Gilgalus. Like the example of here. That come through the the interruption. Interruption, but it's more than interruption. It's the block. It's the the girls of the skull. So the here, the here that grows out of the skull can originate. Its energy originates from within the skull, but when it comes out of the skull, it protrudes from the skull through the hefsek of the skull. So an example Chassidus brings Cyrus is an example of a very diminished form of energy. Like when you cut here, it doesn't hurt. But when you pull it, it hurts. So it's a, it's a sign that there's a nerve ending. At the end of this nerve ending, I know I have very little here, but wherever I do have here, I'll just pull it. But it is a nerve, but it's a very, called diminished, very minute form of energy in the hair, 
let's let let's, let let let's, God forbid you cut the finger, it's going to hurt. You cut another part of the body, it's going to hurt. Because there, the energy is flowing not in the form of dilig and hefsik. There, the flow is very direct. Blood will, even if you cut yourself, blood will come out. You cut here, no blood comes out, there's no pain. But you pull it, you can sense a little something. That means there is a nerve ending. But it comes through the hefsik, through the, what's the word for hefsik? It's almost like a curtain. It's more than a curtain. It's a hefsik is a, you said, what was your pause? What was the word you used? Interruption. Interruption, technically, yeah. When, when a teacher pauses and before he continues flowing. But here, hefsik is a more of a physical thing. When, let's say, a, a light comes through the window through a through a veil, a curtain or a veil. But parsa, pargud, that's usually used. But some form of a veil, through some hefsik, through some block. So so even though the, the kav, as he says, comes from the little, to like this, like the hair that comes from the the veil or the <laughs> the layer of the of the skull mekol mokim hari asaidus yain kimar mayach nevertheless the side of the hair do yainik they do wean they do yainik is when you um, you suckle so let's say you know when you say a child is yainik and suckling the baby so they don't get a, a great flow but they get a narrow flow but there is a flow of energy. So the sires yain kimah mayach. The sires do wean, not the wean. Wean is when you wean the child off. Yeah. Uh, no, not wean is not the right word. Huh? Yes. Suckle. Suckle. You Suckle. Suckle. Unique is a very narrow flow of energy. When something is getting a unique, it's not like full of cup of water. It's just getting it's, it like drops, mm -hmm. like a very narrow stream. So the sires still get a narrow flow of energy from the mind. And technically meaning like the nerves that I just described. The same thing, and this is another name for the ka, chuti yakidisha in Aramaic. Chuta, which is the thread. Yakira Kadisha, Chuti Yakira Kadisha of the holy uh, divine glory. This holy divine uh, thread. The Ikra Mazel, it's called Mazel, how do you begin with the Vekus, but it didn't say Baruch. Mazel is sometimes compared to the Sayers. Mazel is like the sign. The, the Mazolus are the, are the astrological signs, but Mazel here is, you know, the Mazel and Ruchni is, is some form of energy. So it says, the Ikra Mazel, how do you begin with the Vekus, but it didn't say Baruch. It is attached. So for, it's in the level of the attachment to the infinite divine light. For its transmission is gili. For its transmission is in a form of revelation. At the end of the day, Kav reveals, does not hide. Yes, it is affected by the Tzimtzum. It's coming after the Tzimtzum. And it comes through a hefzik, through a narrowness. But at the end of the day, it is revelation. And therefore, we can call it Gili Helen. So Atsilis compared, the Eris, the energies of Atsilis compared to the Kav are revealing, not new. They have a closeness and they're created in a close way. They're, they're formed in a close way. And the Kav compared to the energy before the Imtzum is also, despite the break, beside the jump, despite the, the, the veils, the end of the day, it's revelation, and therefore, it's also revealing that which was concealed. And and the delve into what was what we discussed later, chapter eighteen. We'll get there. Now, parentheses. Now, this is a uh, I think a rather long parenthesis. Let me see. Yes. It's a parenthesis all the way till the end of the chapter, actually. So it's a long parenthesis. Okay. From what we explain, what was explained earlier, we, we understand, is understood, Yuvan is understood, the Be'emes, Yeshusun Maila, Bekelim, Allah Eris. That in truth, there's a virtue and an advantage 
of the containers over the energies. The He's qualifying this in the parentheses because remember now he's focusing on the energies, not on the containers. He already finished with the containers. But so he's now just qualifying something in this long parentheses. That in truth there's a there's a virtue over of the containers over the energies. The Sherish Akim, the root of the containers, hey Marishimu, are from the residue, as we've discussed. When the Tsimsum took place and it concealed all the energy that was there before, it was not airtight. It wasn't like a complete black hole. Even a black hole, by the way, is not a complete black hole. Black hole has energy within it. That's tremendous energy, except it's so concealed you can't see it. When the Tsimsum took place, it says in Kabbalah, interestingly, this is not an Eitz Chaim. This is the Kabbalah of Rabbi Yisrael Musurug, which was another student of the Arizal. And he revealed this part of it in, in other Kabbalistic works. That there was a Rashima that remained, a residue remained. And this would become the beginning of the containers. This is the source of the containers. So think of it like this, the example given. The energy is flowing. The energy has letters through which it expresses. But before the Simpson, the letters are completely submerged, like objects under the water, in the energy. The energy is concealed. What remains? The letters that were there before, but now have emerged. So now they can be begun to begin to become the root and the source of the containers. So we say energy comes from the Kav. Kalim comes from the Rishimu. Kav, Rishimu. Kav is revelation. Rishimu is the beginnings of the containers. Sometimes explained differently, but basically the energy is a reflective of, the, of revelation, the connection to the source, transcendence. Rishimu is the connection to the containers. So he discussed that the containers, the way they're created from the Rishima is in a form of distance. Just as the Rishima is in a form of distance from before the symptom. The Kav on the air, on the other hand, as he said, energy is in closeness and connected to the Kav, to the ray of light. And the ray of light is connected and similar to the energy before the symptom. But now in the parentheses, he's just qualifying and saying that there's now, based on the above, is actually a quality in the containers that the energy doesn't have. Which of course is relevant to the whole continuation of the of the Hemshech, of the discussion. But right now, in this context, he's just we're flowing here from energy container. So he's qualifying in a parenthesis. So going on. The The root of the containers is from the residue. This is a residue, a a, a leftover mark. Imprint almost from Ain Safe, from the infinite that was before the Tsimsum. So he says it's interesting, he doesn't say Eir Ain Sof because the Rashima is not from Eir, it's not Eir, it's Ain Sof, it's from the Ain Sof, the power of Ain Sof from before the Tsimsum. Like it tells elsewhere, this is actually what he's going to say now, it says this is a Chiddush from the Rebbe Marash. And his nephew, Moganov, has had a big debate with him about this. And disagreed when he says that it says elsewhere that the letters of the residue of the Rishima of this mark were not touched by the Tsimsum at all. So think of it like the Tsimsum caused the energy to recede, like the water, let's say, being drawn back, but the objects that remain were just, just emerged. They were there and they now they emerged. So the Tsimsum had no impact and did not touch the containers. So the Rebbe Marash says this is a Chiddush of the Rebbe Marash. His nephew disagreed, and there's actually a whole letter from a Chassid with his nephew, with a Magen um, called the Kapister Rebbe, who was the son of a brother of the Rebbe Marash. So he has a whole debate, which I won't go into right now because it's not directly relevant, but it's definitely important to note, and we'll probably put it into the notes and it should be definitely explained properly. That he disagrees, but the Rebbe, but the Rebbe Marash Rabbi is right away saying, obviously repeating what his father said, does not affect. So we see here, that's right away an advantage. The Kav, though it's reflect, it's light, but it was affected by the Tzimtzum. That's why it's a narrow Kav. The Rishimu, though it's distant and concealed, but it wasn't affected by the Tzimtzum. So right there, you have a virtue that the containers in some way reflect something 
from before the tzimtzum deeper than the energy does, but not in a revealed way. They have within them, embedded within them, something that the tzimtzum did not touch. So we have now, in other words, two agents coming from before the tzimtzum. One is revealed, but touched. One is not revealed, but not touched. So it's an interesting um, twist to the plot. And even though you can say, that through the through the fact that through the fact that the, the revelation of light was concealed from the letters, like I said, you know, think of the letters and there's the the light shining through the letters. Another example would be, you know, let's say letters of light. Let's say you have a projector projecting light, okay? But the light is so intense that you can't see. It's if you had a uh, a uh, a uh, what's the word I use? A, not a veil, a, uh, a frame. What do you call a film? A film that had letters on it. Let's say a film. You know when you project, project a light on a wall. Let's say. Or a movie, or a movie projector. So just light coming out. Then you throw, a film, you put a film into it. The film has images. So now the light and the images, you have something on the wall. Imagine you take away the light. So all that's left are the images. Now you don't see them because there's no light to reveal them, but they're there. But sometimes the light is so intense that oh, that, that that it just like burns through the images, even though they're there, but you can't see it. Think of it like, like uh, you know, sometimes. You have to, you know, a very bright light conceals, but you have to sometimes dim the light and suddenly you see an image emerge. So basically he's saying like this. We just said it does not <laughs> affect it by the symptoms the letters of the Rishim. So even though you can say that through the fact that the light was concealed from these letters, you could say this is what caused them to become, to exist. So Zoa Hefish, and this is the difference. This is the difference between the letters of the Rishima, of this residue, of this leftover uh, uh, something after the Tsimtsum, how they were before the Tsimtsum, and how they're after the Tsimtsum. In other words, they weren't, they, they were affected. He's, he's asking the question that they were affected by the Tsimtsum, you can say. Because before they weren't in existence. Like it says elsewhere, she can say, not like I like, not like initially we discussed that the letters were there, and the only thing they were revealed. No, they weren't there, and when the light was concealed, that's they they, they that caused them to become in existence. But he's not going to accept that. Nevertheless, it's the letters emerged only because of the concealment of the light. So even though this is correct, that what happened was that when you re- you concealed the energy, the light, the letters became existent, but the light didn't create the letters. They were there before. And what the light does is only, it con- it only it, the only thing that happened here was a concealment of the light in the letters. But they didn't touch. Only thing that happened was the letters were, the light was is, is hidden that was there before, but not that the tzimtzum itself touched, not that tzimtzum touched the letters themselves. So just the opposite of the matter. No, no, well, well, I do not understand what you just said. In other words, we say the matter the Kalim, if they don't have or uh, the best they can do is uh We're saying with the these osseous, even though they will say well, they don't have the or it's not correct. The Kalim have it, but they're concealed on its own. What he's going to discuss later about the bitla yesh of the containers is because the containers don't have it on their own in any revealed way. The only thing they can reveal is their subjugation to accept more. But their source, they have they have plenty. 
but they, they don't have an, any conscious fashion. Okay. So bottom line is like this. So he's saying essentially like this. That the concealment caused them to be existent, and before you couldn't, you couldn't call them mitzvahs. Nevertheless, the, the, the impact is not on the letters themselves, it's only on the concealment of the energy in the letters. So it's only through the concealment of the letters. Not that the tzimtzum touched the letters themselves. Rakshin is Salma Ed, the Tsimtsum concealed the light. And the letters were revealed through this in a form of mitzis. Now they are shape and form. They have, they exist. It says elsewhere. And the energies that come from the ka, from the ray of light, even though it's, its source is from the infinite light before the simtsum, nevertheless, it's after the energy was, the light was concealed, the chazer, and then returned and was transmitted. So we see here that this did not happen with the letters. The letters, with the, with the letters emerged. The Simpson did not touch it. Here, the Simpson did touch the light, concealed it. And then it continued, and then it stopped. It, it sort of hidden, it concealed it. And then it returned and was, and, and was, uh, um, transmitted. The same, and this, and, and, and that's how it also appears from Eitzchayim. This what he just said here is also appears as the is the pshat is the mashma. Mashma means it, uh, you know, appears. It's apparently also the Mashma Beitz. How do you translate Mashma Beitz Chaim? It also appears that this is the meaning of Beitz Chaim. Also, it seems from uh, seems that what there he asked the question, a very simple question. Well, simple. It's not so simple. We start. We were chapter eleven. It's a big jump. What does he say there? That since since after the symptom the kav is going to radiate anyway. The light from the before the symptom is going to shine. So why did he have to make a complete symptom, completely conceal like a black hole, and then the kav would radiate again? Let's talk again. Before and after here is all conceptual. We're not talking about in time. It's conceptual, but conceptually. Something could happen in a direct, in a, in, a, in a free, seamless flow, or something could be so-called stopped. So here, a stop is not in time, it's in concept. So why did the Tzimtzum have to conceal it all? And then the Kav, so to speak, next stage emerges. Why not just conceal everything except the narrow let roll? That's what he asked in Eitzchak. So in other words, conceal everything and just leave one little ray of light. The example being, when a teacher is infinitely more brilliant than the student, so he, so he has to conceal and, and condense his ideas, concentrate, contract. So there's two ways to do it. One way is he, instead of speaking quickly and a lot of brilliant ideas, he just starts speaking slowly and very limited, you know. Or he stops altogether, collects his thoughts, and then comes back and says, to the you know what, today we stop, tomorrow we'll start again. So obviously, the stopping is necessary when it's a real distance. He's going to answer this, but I'm just saying the question could be: is Why does he have to conceal it all? He could just say, "You know what? Let's go a little slower now. I'll I'll, I'll stop all the flow, and we'll just share with you our spoon feet. Why do you need the so-called second stage, the, the stop? That's what he asks in Eitzchai. You know, the, the question obviously teaches, gives the answer. Is that uh, so? From this question. And what is the answer there? That if the flow would just continue, even though diminished, very diminished, 
the containers would never have the back capacity to really emerge. In the, an example with this teacher, if the teacher is so brilliant, continues, maybe the teacher could continue. That's fine from the teachers, but the student would not be able to contain it. It's too overwhelming. So think for a moment. I mean, just to give an example, you have infinite light, and instead of it, the infinite light just pulls itself apart and just leaves now a very finite, narrow row. Right. So God can do that, but the student will never find his place. So there's a break. First emerge. It's almost like you need to develop, establish yourself. Then I will come back with a ray of light that would fit into your container. So if, the, if something remained from before the symptom, it would be too overwhelming to allow the containers to, uh, to emerge. She says, The only way those containers can be created, can, 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 can come to existence, is when the oil, the original light and energy is completely concealed. And afterward, meaning stage two, it returns and transmit, is transmitted to say, the, the energy is transmitted, measure, and in uh, properly weighed. Mida is usually the size and Mishkal is weight. But, you know, here it basically means different, uh, different way, it may be Kamas and Echos, whatever, the amount, the quality, the quantity, the quality. The bottom line, it's a measured, it's a measured flow. How they move on, now from this we understand, this is all it's coming to say, that this is, this is Mashma, what he said before. But how, how do we know all this? That's what I'm saying. And he's all revealed it. This, this, is a, this is a divine revelation. How do we know anything from our Sina? Yeah, but... The Shalor writes, when he saw Yitzchayim, the first time the writings, yeah. he says that from the time of Matan Taylor, there hasn't been such good little, little, little. Shalor writes this. Right? As the, and the reason. Yeah. No, but maybe it was a real light uh, from, from the Simpson. How do we know that it stopped totally and then started again? First of all, I told you, how do we know there's a Simpson? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It says that Ramak lo yodami in that Simpson. There were Kabbalists that didn't know, great Kabbalists that didn't know from the Simpson. So Chizis explains that there was a, a lacking understanding of the whole picture. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is that Rizal was the Kabbalist. You have to say, he, he, how, does, how do we know this 10 spheres, not 20? You can't figure it out on our own. I'm saying look, these things, the only way that you know the truth of all this, the truth is, is, is a godly God revealing it to man. Just like we know this 10 commandments and not 11. I mean, what, what's your problem with that? I mean, that's clear. I know, because there's other, there's other Kabbalah Kabbalah. Well, the Mekubah. It's like in the modern. It's but the other, this is the final Psaq. And, and, and so this explains at length. At length. And by Yelich and other places, how through Arizal, you understand the cosmic secrets and the Avdus in ways that Ramak could not understand. The Ramak is lacking. At the end of the day, by Yelich, some of the explains that the Ramak's proclamation is lacking. You're missing a certain big questions are asked. As a result, the Simpson answers a lot, a lot of questions. Not right here for the discussion on this matter. We'll talk about it somewhere else. But the point of the matter is two things. First of all, but first of all, we know because that's what we're told. That's uh, I don't. I mean, no, no. The result didn't figure out because of logic. Now, once we're told, there's a logic behind it. You know, now you understand it. They understand how the Simpson helps resolve a lot of issues. The Simpson actually creates a relationship between us and God. That the Ramak and others could not relate to because God is so different from us. How do you connect a relationship? So the symptom actually resolves that, one of the issues. But the bottom line is, in a, remember, in the interface context, had the Kav remained, it would be similar to what we learned in later chapters about the overwhelming amount of energy. If that, the Kav remained, that's basically we would all be like Nadav Avi all the time. You wouldn't we'd be overwhelmed by the energy. There'd be no, the containers would never have time to mature. It's the equivalent of children having to grow independently stage by stage until they become mature adults. You know, uh, there, there, ha there has to be for, for a process. This is one explanation is given why Matan Tater, why wasn't Matan Tater right after Tawadah Machadah? Why, if the explanation is so Tater should have been given to Adah Machadah, that ate. So one of the explanations given is 26 generations later because people had to be containers and receive and earn it. You know, similar to what Lady Zubadich says about Shabbos Chazay, because they'll, 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 uh, they tear up the shirt. It's appreciation. So you have this concept consistently where if the energy does not conceal itself, we cannot 
emerge and do Aravada properly. I mean, that's the Aveda Dikala mention of it. So the logic is, is tremendous. Remember, you're talking about infinite light. You're not talking about just some light before the symptom. It's a light that doesn't allow existence to be. So even if it was completely to take everything away, the cover would remain. Anyway, let's let's go back to what he was saying here. So what do we know from this? So from this we understand that the, the light of the Kav, of the narrow ray of light that returned and was transmitted from the infinite light before the Simpson is a concealed, is a, is a condensed, is an energy that was, that was concealed with nostalgic and removed. Remember, what he's demonstrating in this parentheses is the following, that the containers that come from the Rishima has an advantage over the Kav. Because the letters of the Rishima, of the residue, were not touched by the Tzimtzum. The letters were not in any way affected. They came into existence because of the Tzimtzum, because the Tzimtzum concealed the light. But the letters lay no by my Tzimtzum are not touched by the Tzimtzum. The Kav, on the other hand, though it's a revelation, and the Rishima is not, but it's a revelation that was directly impacted. This revelation is impacted by the Tzimtzum. It is direct impact. And he just he says, Chaim Mashma. I don't know why he says mashma. Mashma means it appears. It looks like it's more than just appears. It's absolutely sounds like what it says. Absolutely okay, but he says it appears because there is because from the question he says why did it why couldn't it remain? And the answer that it had to be concealed in order to allow containers. So you have to say that the cow was fundamentally altered through the Simpson, or else the question and answer are not answered. If you say that the cow comes back afterwards, just like it would have. It was. It would have. It, it, it would have been had you just taken away the light. You don't accomplish anything. The point is the kav had to be a different type of kav, as a result of the tzimtzum, or else the question and answer the Yitzchayim are not are not answered. That's why I'm asking why it's mashma. So bottom line is the kav now is different than it would have been had it would just have been a remaining light. I gave the example with the teacher. I think it's. An, I think the example fits very well here because. I mean, the example is, is a little, you know, if think of it like the teacher is extending infinite light. Nobody can contain that. There's no students, nothing. A student walks in. I know it's not possible because there's no symptom yet. But let's for argument's sake, a student walks in. And the teacher is doing all this. This light is all over that a student doesn't have a place. So the teacher suddenly, instead of uh, completely concealing, just quiets down and starts speaking slowly. That's not enough. It's too infinite. For the container to find its place, there has to be a complete so called concealment. Yeah, I mean, an example would be very much if you're in the presence, let's say, of the Rebbe. The Rebbe was in the room and you walked in. It doesn't matter, even if he's not speaking or even if he's uh, diminished, the presence itself is just too overwhelming. It's too holy place. So he walks out of the room. Or you walk in a room and he's not there anymore, at least in your eyes. So you can find yourself. And now the teacher comes back and starts giving you a small ray of light. You, you, you have a presence. You have an identity that can begin to receive it. Obviously, if the cow will come too fast, it also won't work. But that type of stage, well, you know, put it in the context of the cosmic context, it goes like this. When the fine light is shining before the symptom, nothing can exist. As much as God wants, now of course, from God's perspective, it can exist, but that's called Yachim. We would not be able to understand it in the logic that we can relate to. Because the energy is so overwhelmingly powerful. So all the powers that God has, power to create the world, the power of Esospheris, Gvul, Bligvul, it's all there. But what's overwhelming is divine presence. Ain't it nobody? You're shining. I mean, technically speaking, that's the way the world should be. If Ain't it nobody suddenly would shine, there would be no trees, there'd be no us. They'd be within the God context they'd be, but we wouldn't be able to find ourselves. We have no way, you know, when, when we say, for example, how can we hurt each other? I can hurt you, even though you and I are brothers. More than that, the Rishalmi says we're parts of one body. So is it possible? I, will, I, can't, I wouldn't hurt my own hand. So why can we hurt each other? A simple klotzkash. The answer is we don't see it. I don't feel it. I can convince myself that you're not part of me. You're not, and, and I can convince myself that, 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 you know, I have my interests, you have your interests, and then which is the whole world runs that way. That would not be possible if the air was uh, dominant. So the air had to conceal itself to allow an independent reality to emerge. That reality is you, me, existence as we know it. Obviously, in the higher levels, it's not Elam Hazar, Gashmi, Khumri, 
crass and coarse and, 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 and full of ego and evil. But the idea of an independent entity, the Chochmah should feel I'm Chochmah. Atzilus should be a world called Atzilus. You know, it's a world. It is a world. It's an entity. It's in the divine image. It's holy. But it's the holy of holies. It's, a, it's an existing world that is senses itself. It senses that it's connected to the source. We don't have that, but, but I'm just saying. So you need to have that. That independent reality can only happen with the, through the symptom. The other Kabbalah, Kabbalah have a problem. The problem they have is what happens? Since there's no total concealment, the divine light somewhere, so they, that's why they have the, they, they, that's why they resolve it a different way. They see that means we don't really have connection to God. Because if God was really present, there's no way we could be existent. So what they say is, we okay, we exist, and what we experience is God's glory, God's the light, reflection, ill of all. But we never can touch the etzim of God, because if that etzim would be revealed, we, wouldn't be, we would burn up. And there are others that say we touch the, the essence, but only by annihilating ourselves. But in other words, we have to get rid of our parameters. That's true. Only is One second, one second. So this explains that you need both. That's the whole interface point. That, it, that you want to have existence. That's why the whole Eris and Caleb, that's the whole effort of making them meet. But the Tzimtzum allows for, if, if, if you take away the Tzimtzum, you end up having a problem of meeting. You never really can meet. You can only meet on one of the terms. Either it's on more on God's terms and less us. The Tzimtzum allows space. Uh, let, let's go back to what I said with that, the mediation. Two different types of people. Who are, let's not even talk about infinite and finite. Two different types. And they have no common denominator. The most you can do is maybe I compromise a little, you compromise a little. For them to truly unite, you have to have room. For, first of all, you have to have two identities. If I'm so overwhelming, if one partner is completely overwhelming, the other one is passive, you don't have a relationship. Um, right. So that's possible. God is master, we're slaves. You know, or if one, or if we become too much ourselves, then then there's less godliness there. So the point is, if you really want it to be, the first thing you need well, to establish. The Rebbe brings, for example, Havdola. Okay, but look, listen. The point is that you need both. One second. The, the Rebbe explains that Havdola is the is the necessity for Achdus. You need Havdola. If you make Shabbos and Chayil one. Before there's Havdalah, they, they, they both will be destroyed. They're both compromised. So Havdalah is not, like, you know, the fact that our body, for example, you have a windpipe and an air pipe and all the other diversity, that's our survival. So Ahdus, first you need to distinguish. So when you're talking about a world, once God wants a Dirbet Achtenim, He wants a diverse world. That diversity can only emerge if the energy of divine light is concealed. Once it emerges, then you have another entity, and now the question is how these two entities can join. If God didn't want another entity, yes, then he wouldn't need a symptom. And he wouldn't, I mean, on our terms. He wouldn't need all these uh, this whole machinations. So the point is, to have an independent entity, you need to have a concealment. You have the concealment. Then they come, start coming together. The Kav is essentially a process. Like I said, this is an example of the teacher beginning to reconnect after there's a separate entity. So... Um, and that allows the connection. And then the question, of course, which is the whole purpose of Ayin Beis, is how does that interface really play itself out? How do you have a place where you have part divine, part existence, part transcendence, part existence? That's the whole discussion. But that's in our context, it's Eris and Caleb. So each one has something that the other doesn't have. Let's continue here. So we see from this that the Eir HaKav was actually impacted. So you have the, this is like the, the twisted irony. Now, on one hand, the whole point was that Kalim from Atsilis are distant and infinitely distant from the divine source. And energy is close and therefore similar to. So from the perspective of the energy of Atsilis, Adis, it's Gilead Hela. It reveals the hidden because it's Dovuk and connected. Kav is connected. Containers, on the other hand, are disconnected. And they come and they're, and they're in a concealed fashion. But now, suddenly, in this parenthesis, he twists it around just to show you I mean, it's all part of the interface to show you that each one has something that the other one doesn't have the other way around. The containers connect to the Rishima that have something that the Akav doesn't have. It has a certain undiluted reflection of that which was before the Tzimtzum. Not a revelation, but manifestation of something before the Tzimtzum because the letters at the end of the day are like really were untouched. The light 
disappears, concealed, but the energy is emerged. The Kav, on the other hand, was very much touched by the Tzimtzum and affected, as he just proved from Eitz Chai. So even though it remains revelation, and the containers remain concealed, but there's something in the containers that's a very pure reflection of the divine Kayach basically. So it goes back to the whole thing. Each one reveals, one is essence. And they both need each other, and they both feed each other. Another parenthesis within the we're in a big parenthesis here in chapter, in chapter in this chapter eleven. So he says now he he, he qualifies and what it says in now goes of Eitz Chaim. Eitz Chaim is very similar to Eitz Chaim. It's another uh, book that the Rav Chaim Vital wrote. Eitz Chaim is more classic, used more. Eitz Chaim is another version of certain ideas there. With the, so the, so he says what it says in Haga in the footnote. The gloss in Eitzes Chaim, the Adam Ayashu who Madrigish Shalai Higibay at Simpson, Yeshlem Shizab Chinz Pimi Sakav. Okay, he just, it just, this in a sense, this contradicts what he just said. He just said that the Kav is. Like, he says what it says that Adam, the Adam Ayashu, Adam Ayashu is another expression in Kabbalah for Kav. Remember, Igulim VeYeshur, Igulim are circles, Igul Agadol, the great circle. Yeshur is means line, straight. So Yashur, you say Adam Yashur, even though it's a buzzer, Adam Yashur Helach, but it's referring to Adam Yashur is the Kav. It says there in the footnote, in the gloss, that, it's, that, that this is not from a level that doesn't, that the symptoms are not touched. So he says, Yashlem is Shazab Khinz Pirim Sakav. So he's answering. Yashlem, you can say this is a Khinch. That what he's talking about is the Pirim Sakav. So now it plot thickens. Now even the Kav, in its inner dimension, also has something. That was not touched. No explanation given right here. In other words, you have to say the primi sakav does not affect the existence within after the Simpson. Because the question, of course, you can say is a second. Right? Eitz Chaim just asked the question. Forget about the Rebbe Rashab says. Let's talk about the Eitz Chaim. The Eitz Chaim. Eitz, Chaim. Eitz Chaim said that it can't leave a kav because then existence can't emerge. So you have to conceal it all. And then comes a, conce- a kav. That means the kav is a f- f- impacted. And now he's suddenly saying that, it's a, that the kav does not ha- is not impacted. So what's the difference between the kav after the symptom and if the kav was left before the symptom? So you have to say that primi is a kav that is more, is more of an unconscious state of the kav. It's not its own, so you don't reveal it. What that means exactly is that even when the, that the kav the Even line. the kav, the outer kav that emerges has an, an, a dimension that that that's not that also reflects the deeper thing, but it, but it has to be in a concealed way, or else there's a problem. Maybe that's why I said it's chaim is mashma, because it's mashma that it's like this. Because you could say that did not touch it, since did not touch it, and here his answer is primi sakav. Okay, this requires elaboration. Let's not go right now there. I have to give this some thought later. Primi sakav. Well, remember, at the end of the day, after Hashem dictates, the fact God is one dictates that everything in air and keli, energy and containers, is embedded all kinds of reminders of the divine, which is why they ultimately can work together. Because remember, we're not talking about entities that are really separate. You're talking about entities that were, in order to create an existence like ours, which is a diverse existence, you need separate entities. But they all come from a, a, a God, Atmos, where they're all one there. So you have to say that oneness radiates and is embedded in their beings. That's why Kali has the capacity for Bittal, Air has the capacity to descend. It's coming from a higher place. So in other words, when we say, for example, that everything in this world is a lesson for the Hashem, the Rebbe gives an example. Eden Haytzani, he talks about David HaMelech. Shavuos, that he would curl himself up in learning, and he gives the example of a uh, of a of a, of a sheretz, of a uh, snail. So says, the Rebbe asks, "What kind of? Why would you give an example of a snail? Because a snail is also created by God. Everything is a marshal for other course. So it's true. On a horse, you're not supposed to eat, but you ride on a horse. Then it's not clippers, so clippers at maze. So everything in this world is examples of the divine. It's not just." Because God created it all, so everything reflects another element that we can learn from. There's nothing that's outside of it. So the same thing is in the The Kav, even though... I'm sorry, first I start with the Rishima. The Rishima, even though it's concealed, it has something from 
before the tzimtzum, the kav doesn't have. The kav, even though it's revealed and affected by the tzimtzum, has something that also that was not affected. In other words, bottom line is they all have everything. The question is, what's the dominant element? And what's the uh, recessive element? And of course, the goal is unity. But again, unity can't happen unless first everyone has their identity. Then you can begin to talk. If one person just overwhelms it all, you have no situation. And, you know, we say, the third verse that that reconciles, comes after those two verses. You know, you can ask the question, what do we need? Why does God put two verses that contradict? Just tell us what it is. Because you wouldn't have, like, to appreciate, let's say, that uh, the classic one is, the voice came from uh, the Kapetis, on top of the Ark. Or it came out of El Maid, out of the... Uh, the Sanctuary. Right, the sanctuary. So first it says once like this, once like that. Then comes the third posik in the Pashanose there that says that it came out from there and went through. So it's both. But to appreciate, really appreciate that, and that there's two elements to this, the Rebbe explains this also, is first you have one verse, because there's a certain advantage that is coming out. It's a way like the Mumutsa also. That one part that represents Kezi Kedoshim. The other part, Oyal Ma'id, is that it speaks to the people. And the third posik comes, explains it has both elements. So real mediation, Sholem, Teferis, is not destroying the two or two against one. It's coming and showing that there's a deeper dimension. Real Sholem comes from the word, not absence of war, it's oh, completeness. Sholem. Wholeness. Right? So wholeness means you discover there's a deeper common denominator that shows the beauty of two diverse. And now you see the, 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 the complementation that happened, which is what... What the world is about, a real hiskaulus, of different forces, a harmony within diversity. Okay, so now going back. So we see from this, harmony within diversity. So, so therefore, we see from this that there's an advantage, a virtue of the advantage of the containers over the energies. The fact that it comes from the Rishima with the Loi Nogabat Simpson and the Kav was Nogabat Simpson. The Chaim will be Moshal the Nitzvot Sanim from Minashal Hevesanah. And the same is understood from the example that we gave earlier from a spark that was separated from the flame, from the torch. Shadi Nitzvot to Maguva Etzim Maschola Hagachel is Rashal Heves. I'm sorry. Shadi Nitzvot to Maguva. The spark comes from the actual body and essence of the of the coal. But the flame is not the actual coal. It's interesting. What he's saying here is like when you have a hot coal, right? And you strike it, sparks fly. Now, when you don't strike it, the gechelis is burning. It's an ember. So he's saying the flame is not the actual coal. The sparks are the actual coal. Okay. Hmm. Well, what, the past is what he means by that is because when you strike the coal, <laughs> it looks like it's, a... it's not just you strike the flame. And it's a good that's a martial habit, that's what you should say. No. No, 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 no. Then, then it wouldn't be. Look, look at the line. Move them in the martial and need the need to send them to the martial habit. So we go for that's a martial habit. Martial habit ain't yet some other habits. No. That's not what he wants to say. He wants to say, I know what you mean. No, it's not. You're like the girl. You, you right away find the, the mistake. Is, I'm trying to understand what it says. And you're trying to change it. No. I think, I think it's the other way around. I'll tell you why. It wouldn't work. He's trying to say the Kalen have a mila over the air. The air don't really reflect the whole etzim because they were affected by the tzimtzum. The Kalen reflect the etzim because they were not touched by the tzimtzum. The etzim is the gechelis, not the shalhevis. If you say that the spirit comes from the, from the shalhevis and shalhevis doesn't come from the gechelis, you don't achieve what he wants to achieve. He wants to say the gechelis is like the etzim here. That the spark has something that the shalhevis doesn't have. What does the spark have that the Shalabas doesn't But the spark's not coming from the Gechelis. The spark is coming from the Shalabas. No, no, no. It's, 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 it's not. 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 It's
Look at the third it, Maybe though, but it, but, it, but, it, but, it, but it comes from the Gechelis itself. Because you have to strike the Gechelis. If you fan the flame, you're not going to get sparks. You have to hit the, the coal, the sparks should come out. So the spark, in some ways, reflected to the the of the Gechelis. The Gechelis. So then you should say, I need to say, I didn't build Gechelis. No, neither, because it comes out of, the spark comes from the flame. It's, it's a spark. If you have no, if it was not, it was a, it was a, it was a, dry, it was a, an unlit coal, there would be no sparks. If you strike two coals together, a spark will fly, it will come out. It's, it's not what he's saying. Directly. He's saying like this. He's saying, I need, mm -hmm. there's a whole chapter, the last chapter he talks about. The sparks come from the flame. But you, you, to get them, you have to strike the coal. I don't think he's saying the sparks come from the flame. I think it is. According the nibdo from the flame. It's completely separate. One doesn't have the tears of the other. One doesn't have some nature. No, it's so separated what, from what, the flame. That's what you're talking about. You're you talking about different things. If that's what it continues and says, there's what they're doing. The nature's come from, from the coal itself, and the, the shalot is. Yes, it's on existence. Yeah, but before they said, the needs is separated, separated from the shalhat. That doesn't mean it's separated it's off from it. it just right, exactly. It's separate from it. That's that posh. That's separate from the, yeah. from the from the flame because it's a spark. Yeah. It's not part of the flame. That is a given. That's a whole chapter ten talks about that. And it don't mean that it's different from the shalhat. Right. right. That's, it's a whole chapter. Sorry, chapter ten talks about this. He talks about how the sparks are flame. They're the same nature of the flame, but they're separate from. Yeah. Then there's another discussion. Which is what he's saying. It comes from the Guva Etzema Yeah, Nimdul means something else then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After yeah. it was separated, that it, yeah. that it separate. Right, from. separate from. I'm looking here at the beginning of chapter 10, you can see it. Yeah. So you have to say, because you're striking the 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 Gechelis, the call. Vashalevis Eina Etzema Gechelis. And this is the reason Masha is here in the Slavish Bakalim. So let me explain that again. So, bottom line, we see from this that the containers, let's put it this way when a coal is burning regularly, so there's a flame coming out of the coal, the coal is a, 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 some, a body, and the flame is coming out of it. You strike the coal, you have to strike it. There has to be stronger power. To get those sparks flying, the sparks are obviously only coming are, are coming out of the out of the out of the flame, but separate from. But they're coming from the gechelis itself, whereas the flame itself, you cannot say is the etzema gechelis. Yes, he's identifying the spark. I have to say he's identifying it not that the spark comes from the actual coal. It's coming, you know, it's it's coming, but it's coming from striking the actual coal. Breaks off. It's a it's a break. It's a break away from the uh, coal. Must to break away from the flame too. What do you mean? If that's what he says. From etzem of the In other words, you hit the coal. What what happens? Pieces break off. That's the nature of it. But that's not the flame. That's little pieces of the uh, of the gehelis of the uh, of the gehelis. And then oh, that's what he means. Maybe then, that's what. Maybe that's correct. So it's not just they become the tzitzis. They become the tzitzis. Those little pieces become the tzitzis. Maybe mm, that's interesting. And then that's why they go out. That's the same thing on Shabbos when people think things fall off from the. Uh, okay, so in other words, you're saying, we're not just saying sparks that we usually see flying that disappear in a second. They are. It's really, a, it's, they are saying that, but they burn out. Quickly. Yeah, they burn out quickly. But you're actually saying because they came from parts of the, the coal itself is like. But the truth is like this. But just like the shell heavens, it's coal is not, is not the coal itself. But this is why the spark of the coal itself. Because, because it's little pieces, and that's why. It, uh, but the flame part. We're talking about the flame part. No. No, there's nothing. There's no mamash to the flame. There's nothing to break off. The flame doesn't have mamashes. We have to study this martial art to see in other places, but it's interesting how he's saying it. But it's, it's clearly something of this nature because he's giving this as an example with it. So go on. The zewa tam, and this is the reason masha eris yerdim the slabish bakeli. That's why you can carry. That's why the energies descend to manifest in the containers. By the way, that's it's why because you know. the containers, the root of them is higher than the root of the energies. So, because the, they come from something from the etzem of the gechelis, that's what I'm saying. It has to the etzem of the gechelis. You can carry the flame out in Shabbos. You can't carry the gechelis out in Shabbos. It's not, there's nothing in the flame. Okay, so so therefore, so that's why the, the energies would descend into the containers because they the, the root of them is higher than the, than the and energies. And that's why, also in truth, the bitl. The subjugation of the containers reaches deeper, higher, higher than, than the subjugation and bittle and self and the suspension of suspension of the energies. 
שזה עניין הקדומס נייסל ונשמע, זה the beginning of the discourse. This is the Indian, this is the meaning, this is the, the significance of the of the Agdoma, the, the prefacing Nasir to Nishma when the Jews says Bishashik Dimu, right? The beginning of the Mayan race kings. The beginning when the Jews prefaced by Matantara, they said first Nasir we will do, then we will understand. So he's saying this is the preface. What? The Nasu are Bitl Shemit Sadakela. Nasa to do action. Is the bit the self the, the suspension that comes from the containers? Like he says in Torah, air and Alta Rebbe, an explanation of Kibla Yehudim, it's a poor mind. Yes, Lame the Gamki Maila Saskafi Ali Sapcha. We could say that this is also the virtue and advantage of his Sakafia controlling yourself over his Sapcha transformation. The Ikirin Yaskafu Bakelin Dafka. Because the primary thing of Iskafia, meaning stopping yourself. Refraining from something is specifically in the containers. And that reaches higher than transformation. Like he says in the explanation on the Mimer called Kachumi Itchem Truma in the editions of Torah. This is all a long parenthesis where he's like tying things up before he continues on the flow. Yeshlemer, another Yeshlemer. Yeshlemer, you can say, and so far I, I've read one, two, three, four, four Yeshlemers in this parenthesis. Yeshlemer, the Zel Gamke King. Yeshlemer, the Zel Gamke, Mashukosa, Vayachin Yisrael, Yisrael, Negadahar. And the Yeshlemer, this is also what it says, Vayachin, the Jews rested, Negadar, across the mountain. Kulam ki Yishachar. Why say Vayachin, not Vayachnu? Loshin Yachid, Vayachin. They, uh, like one person rested because they were all like one person, one heart. Kishak and Belevach, the only group of Kishak. The in Hayes Chalkus Mashain, they are saying Shavis, Hayes Emet Sadar Kale. Talk about diversity. Because Hayes Chalkus, their diversity, their distinction, their differences, that was they don't think alike. The Gemara said, Ain't they saying Shavis? No two minds think alike. No two days are alike. How is that Mitzad Kalim? That's from the containers. And Mitzad, if I've shot it, Mitzad Ha. The first is Kula Masim Hashem. Because if you talk from the perspective of souls, like he says in Tanya, Perik Lamed Beis, Kula Masim Hashem. They're all common. They all have a commonality. Because they're all Avechad Lukalon. They're all children of one. Like they're like the energies. From the Nefosh's perspective, from the soul's perspective, the spirit, they're like the energies that are pshutim, that are seamless. What have we defined pshutim? That are, someone said it with the. Uncompounded? Huh? No, more than that. There was another word. Not on uh, pshutim. Non identifiable. Are smooth. Amorphous? Non identifiable. Just very. But more than that. They're amorphous. And pshutim, they're seamless. In the sense, seamless is one word, but it's more than that. Shem pshutim, the contrast is mutsuyarim. They have particles, they have shape. They're shapeless, basically, shapeless. The aim them is chalkas, and they don't have distinction and diversity. Same thing is with the shamas, with souls. That be'etzim, essentially, they're basimas, they're all like one. Common. Masimas is, is not just one, masimas is masimas, they're all, they're, no, they're commonality. They're all masim, they're all um, compatible, really, more than that. They're seamless again. And the distinctions are from the containers. And this is explanation. By Matan Tere, that they all stood as one person, that was the subjugation, the sublimation, the suspension of the contain, the suspension of self of the containers. In other words, what's the Kiddush? It says they came to Matan to Spa Sinai and they stood as one. From a Shama point of view, they were one even before they stood on Mount Sinai. From the perspective of Avedis, there's one. The Chiddush is, even the level of containers, where there's distinction, where they don't think alike, which is actually mm -hmm. consistent with the Medrash, the other Medrash that says mm -hmm. that all the Chaniyas, all that's traveling, till that point, they were fighting. Mm -hmm. Of course, it doesn't mean the Shama. The Shamas don't fight, because they were, their containers were alive. Their containers were dominant. So the Chiddush here is that the, even on the container level, with his distinction, so this is all talking about the Miley, he's talking about all the advantages of the containers. He said, so number one is, in this parenthesis, that from this perspective, 
the Rishima, the containers, is, has something that the, the energy does not have. The symptoms did not touch it. We gave the example with the, the chelis, with the sparks. This is the reason the energies descend in order to manifest, because they sense the deeper element of the containers. This is Agdamas Nasal and Nishma. The Nasa comes first, because it goes on the Bitla Kalim, so it's more it's 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 more powerful. What brought this in this bit? What's interesting be a nasa and nishma? In other words, nishma is seichel. Hmm. So to right. start with so say nasa before nishma is a big thing means you're and you're ready to put it's not just I will do and not understand. You know, like uh past is that even your kalim where you so to speak are separate, you're also committing. And that's the khidish of a yichan. This is the khidish of iskafi over isapcha. Because isapcha is kafi meaning even when you're not in the mood, even when you're still a container, you're still subjugating yourself. And this is the... What brought out the spittle? The air, right? What brought out the spittle? The air earlier that you saw by the by, by Rasina. That's saying what brought it. doesn't matter, but, the, but something brought it out. Okay. One second. Listen. Masha man teira hai kum kesha hai o bin takir. Kum hai bisasif rashi am yachat. You know, the Hebrew should know. Bisasif rashi am yachat. When all the leaders of the nation... Uh, gathered together. So why would he bring the Koya Rosh Hashanah? Shehem Bchinus Halisakdus Viskalus Misa Bitla Kel. That goes on Rosh Hashanah. It's connecting everything. Am I tell you Rosh Hashanah? That the, the unity and the interconnectivity that comes from the Bitl and the subjugation, both the subjugation of the containers. The Zayu Gam Kinyan Kabbos Elos Malch Hashemand Rosh Hashanah. This is also the acceptance of the yoke of heaven. That we do on Rosh Hashanah, Shehu Inyan Bitla Kelim Dafka. That is explicitly, specifically the sublimation of the containers. By Dezehu Ayisachus. And through this comes the Rosh Am Yachad, the unity. Unity. Yeah, because it's no Chiddush. It says when Jews come together by Fabrenin, they can do accomplish something Malach Machol can't accomplish. Because it's like a father who sees his children at peace. There's dafka the container. There's no chiddush and the come together. Same thing by matan teira. They had the bit like kelim, the, 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 the sublimation of the containers. To the extent that they became like one person. It's interesting. He says matan teira. In truth, is the shkedus sibi. The Rebbe brings by dayenu. We say ili kavina lachar sinai. The loy nasim lo nasat teira dayenu. Fine, it's okay, it's connected. So the Rebbe brings that the fact that they just saw Sinai is already a Ahadi that came from it. Okay. Vizeho Yachon, Kinai says Achon, okay. Talking generally Matan Tele, the whole period. Vizeho Yachon, Rabbi Matan Tele, and this was a great preparation to Matan Tele, the Tation Yim Shum Kinis Atma Saint Sof. See, here's the opposite. In order to, that it should, it should be transmission from the essence of the divine Baruch Hu, she's saying, you're not Teda, which is Teda, Shu Amshach is Gili Asma Sein Nusra Baruch Hu, the Bermat Teda Gili, the Gili Mamash, that in order for the Teda, the Amshach transmits the divine, the, the, the revelation of the divine essence, that the Bermat and Teda, that stood very much revealed, literally revealed, Gilimam is very literally revealed about Shachazuai, the Bitla Kalim Dafka. This transmission, this manifestation came specifically through the sublimation of the containers. And this is the meaning that they rested there all as one. I had a Bitl Shalom, which means because of the, through the Bitl that they had. And this was necessary. In order there should be the Amshach Satan in Atmos. In other words, to bring down the light, bring down even the Tater from the Etzem, required for the Bitla HaKalim. Now, what brought the Bitla HaKalim doesn't say here. I would say not, I would say it does not come from the light. Actually, it's a preparation to the higher revelation. Obviously, something brought them there. Sinai, they saw it, they sensed it. But he's not getting into that. But here, bottom line is, what we learn from this is what the Kalim give to the Eris. That's the parentheses here. Let's do the, 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 the let's do the kitzur, the kitzur summary of chapter eleven. As in contrast to the containers that are formed and shaped and created through richuk, through distance and concealment, 
The creators of the Kav, the energies, on the other hand, they're formed through the Kav, which is the closest. But Kav gave a double grade itself. And the Kav itself touches and is attached to the divine light before the Tzimtzum. So therefore, we see the difference in Atzillus. The Eris are Gilead Hell and reveal what was hidden. The containers are something new and, are, and reflect the distance, the distance from the source. But then he adds, and this is the parenthesis here, it's in the Pnim, the Yesh Yisun Milas Bekelim, the Aces, the Rishim, the Nagav, and the There's an advantage in the quality of the containers because the letters of the Rishim, the letters of that residue, were not touched. The Tzimtzum did not touch in them. In them. Mashenka Nakav, whom I in Stalak. However, the Kav is from the energy that was removed. That's why the, the bit of containers reach deeper. And with this he explained the meaning of a Yichin Yisrael that they rested. I have an interesting question here. You could argue that the Bitla Kalim is greater than Bitla Air precisely because it's distant. Not because its source is, is higher. That a Kav, like Nishama, that a Kav should be bottled with the Kiddush. It's Air. It's connected to the source. It's diminished, but it's connected. A Kali can, can convince itself it's on its own. It's created from God, but it doesn't feel it. It doesn't sense it. So the Kiddush is, and even the container, the bodies, also, they're united by Martin Taylor. It's interesting, he says all of this in the context that the Kalim are sources higher than, because they didn't touch the Tzimtzum. That's why when they have Bittl, they reach a deeper place. Not because they're distant and they come closer, but because... It's the Bittl, no, because, no, because they because their source is higher. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? If you remove the, the, the Gashmi... The, the I asked a question, actually. I asked a question. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm not no, no, they didn't take away the parentheses. Forget about the kid, Kalim have a higher root than Eir. So, even if he didn't say that, you have a Kiddush of Bitla Kalim. Because the Kalim, even from the container point of view, they have Bitla because they're distant. So what, 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 why is it important to emphasize that they're also sourced in a higher place? Now, it's true. You can argue that the fact that they're distant means that they're sourced. Because the fact that they reflect the distance, the fact that they can come down so far, means that they have a higher source. And the fact that it comes from a higher source, that's why it is concealed. So you could connect it that way. But I'm just pointing it out. I'm just pointing out that the depth of what their power is, is not just because they're, they're distant, but because they're rooted in a very deep place. So when they have Bittal, it reveals that very deep place. That's what he's really saying. Scafia reveals that very place. Because when they have Beatles, it strips away the Kaling. So what's left? Only the source. Yeah, no, 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 no. I understand that. That's fine. That's basically what happened. So then, and there's no, no. But you could argue that, this, uh, that let's say it didn't have a high source. The fact that a Kaling is bavat itself is has an echus, a quality, a deeper, Why? significant so a higher source. Why? Why? Not because it's a bigger effort. It's, it's, it's a bigger Kiddush. Okay, so you give it an A for effort. But, but no, no, so no. So therefore it causes, it would be like like a person who overcomes a, a challenge will bring out a deeper uh, pleasure from the, the age, let's say, that it's only does. Not because he has a higher source, it's because they, they have to overcome that. That's enough reason. It's in the Gavit. It's true, it's not in the Chefz. I, I'm just pointing this out. Yeah. I'm just pointing a point. There is, sometimes it says, just the mere fact that somebody overcomes a challenge Forget about it. Okay. You don't have to necessarily explain the root. I understand it's Gishmaka. You could say it's deeper. I'm just pointing that out. That's all. It could very well be that that's what he wants. He doesn't just want that Gavit. He doesn't just want that the human being overcame a challenge. He wants to talk that you, the Kali itself, as you said, once it's stripped of that, then it reveals that deeper part. So it's also in internalized, the interface. Yeah, he's trying to touch the divine here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, it just, it, you know, it's something that is, it's what's called discussion. That, that's not a question. It could also be, you remember, parentheses, once you read it, you see like in the pizza, then it all becomes woven together. It's not just a footnote. Mm -hmm. So we stop here, chapter 11. We did chapter 11, pages 17, 18.
Get it? Yeah. 